They bring color and class to the catwalk, introducing new styles and trends. The skilled Luca Luca, Australian couturier Colette Dinnigan, the illustrious Alice Tempoli, the distinguished Nicole Miller, and Mark Bauer creating feminine clothing for today's woman. With designs that often appear on the red carpet, the fashion house of Luca Luca has become synonymous with women's fashion that's unmistakably feminine. Established by Milan native Luca Orlandi, who was born into a family already involved in the textile industry, working with fine yarns and fabrics, he became involved with the fashion business when he was a teenager, receiving training in Italy and the United States of America. Before launching his own label, he gained work with well-known designers Bill Blass and Oscar De La Renta. However, by 1991, Luca Luca was formed, with the first boutique opening a year later, followed by appearances at New York Fashion Week a few years on, where he showed bright, colorful dresses. The Luca Luca look was first inspired by an abstract painting, and since then, Orlandi has maintained his fondness for vibrant colors and has so far successfully wooed the American women's wear market. Today, Orlandi is known to design women's clothes that have a vintage, classic quality to them. Their texture is often compared to the kind of clothes you might see in old Italian films. However, in 2004, Luca Luca brought back the drain pipes, or better known as the slim fit pants, and christened them rollerblade pants. He sent out a parade of models down the runway in search of Lara Croft style, with body-hugging leather jackets and fitted satin trousers that screamed tough chick chic. Flippy little skirts were cinched at the waist with satin ribbons and paired with opaque stockings in black, plum and even canary yellow, while evening outfits consisted of low-cut satin dresses and plunging halter tops with jeweled necklines in black and silver, which serve as the alternative to the little black dress. His fall 2005 collection at New York Fashion Week had looks that were tailored yet flirty and feminine, with patterns including roses and flower motifs. Silk and satin, often fashioned in the shape of flared skirts, was displayed for evening wear. Most seasons, femininity plays a major element in Orlandi's designs, although in 2006, while it was still there, it had evolved over the years, and a new emphasis was introduced in a spring-summer collection for New Yorkers that was inspired by New Yorkers. The color palette was dominated by white, black and tomato red to keep it simple so they could focus on the silhouette and volume. As for fabrics, linen and satin were used liberally. Outfits ranged from the office-friendly to casual evening dresses and floaty summer skirts, while models appeared dressed in linen or organza, while embroidery and bows added a light-hearted and sometimes colorful touch to the straightforward yet youthful arrangements. But Orlandi's and Luca Luca's petite creations weren't the only stars on the runway, as celebrities like Carmen Electra, rapper Kanye West and socialite Paris Hilton all flocked to see the show. His spring 2008 collection was more subdued than any he's shown in the past, focusing on misty mauves and sea foam greens. Clothes were cut close to the body, as seen in the sheath dresses and skinny pants that slouched at the ankle. Ornamentation was minimal, though some dresses were decorated with monochromatic beaded embroidery or gauzy squares of fabric and geometric panels, reminiscent of the stained glass and mosaics that inspired the designer. He also offered a jumpsuit, a strapless version in an oyster-colored silk shantung fabric with a little sheen, all in keeping with his desire to create the sensation of light. In 2008, Orlandi assigned American designer Raul Melgoza as creative director for the House of Luca Luca. He showed his first collection for spring 2009 at New York Fashion Week, wanting to bring the brand back to its roots of very body-conscious, sexy clothing and featured lots of all-white looks with crisp and clean lines. The Luca Luca label has a growing reputation and become a quintessential brand in the fashion business. Inspired by the modern woman, the Luca Luca look, even through the changing seasons, has always kept with its sexy, feminine and chic image.
Australia's queen of fashion, Colette Dinnigan, has made many women around the world stand out and look stunning in her graceful and luxurious gowns. Born in South Africa, Dinnigan's career catapulted when she moved to Australia and received work with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation in their costume department. By 1992, she had her own label and became the first Australian to introduce a ready-to-wear collection in Paris by 1995. Showcasing her newest collections at Australian Fashion Week in Sydney, where some of the world's top models parade top designer outfits, gave Dinnigan the coverage she needed to gain popularity in the international fashion circuit. The clothes she makes is something that all women like because it's so feminine. At the same time, it's um, kind of bohemian, you know, like um, sort of, uh, you can do with it what you want, put it together the way you want it, there's no rules. She was one of the rising stars that unveiled their creations at the Paris Autumn and Winter Pret-a-Porter fashion season in 1997. Having established herself in the United Kingdom already, her aim was to expand her presence in Europe. Her down-to-earth style was reflected in simple lace and brocade dresses, mostly in black and beige. Her designs were feminine but not too frilly, and even though they weren't too tight-fitting, they were still sexy. I really love that sort of feeling of things that are bigger, not really tight and fitted, and I think they're just as um, sensual or sexy as something really fitted, you know, it's, so it's quite, it's very classical too. She was on her way to becoming a national treasure and was the only Australian designer with a standalone shop in London. She is still the only Australian designer ever included in the official fashion calendar of the all-powerful Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture in Paris, next to names like Dior, Yves Saint Laurent and Chanel. Her ready-to-wear collection for the fall winter 2004-2005 season was shown at the Carousel de Louvre and while she acknowledges that she does not push forward the frontiers of fashion, Dinnigan's clothes are beautiful and desirable, mixing her signature sexy femininity with a more contemporary sleekness. Well, once there were only pretty lace frocks, handmade undies and little beaded cardigans, there now also strode sassy mini dresses, satin evening pants of chic masculine cut and stunning evening dresses. It's pretty obvious that her success has come from her ability to design clothing that women lust over. She's seen as a real woman designing for real women. Although in 2008, the year she was celebrating her 12th year at Paris's prestigious Fashion Week, she showed a collection that was a bit more somber and spikier, with skinny leggings and lots of black. Dinnigan went for a full mix with military detailing in gold colours and all revealing chiffon blouses, while other models strutted down the runway with dresses embellished with sequins and adorned with feathers. Each one of her garments are carefully handmade in Australia and shipped to an even larger clientele who wear them to film premieres and award ceremonies. Musician Taylor Swift walked the red carpet at the 2008 American Music Awards in a sparkling silver Colette Dinnigan mini dress, while Pink arrived at the designer's home country for the Australian MTV Awards wearing a white and silver sequin Dinnigan gown. Kate Hudson also chose to wear Dinnigan while attending the Australian premiere of her film, as did Charlize Theron, who brought traffic to a halt in Sydney wearing her sparkling silver sequin dress. Like other well-known designers Stella McCartney and Zach Posen, Dinnigan in 2008 released a discount lingerie line called Wild Hearts for the clothing department store Target. Colette Dinnigan, one of Australia's best-known fashion designers, making women look more feminine than ever, has helped put the country that gave her an incredible career on the fashion map. As the founder of Temperley London, Alice Temperley has become a renowned designer known for her feminine and eye-catching creations. English-born Temperley is a fairly new face to the fashion scene. Having been born in the mid-1970s, she studied at London's Central St. Martin's College of Art before completing her master's degree at the Royal College of Art. 
By 2000, her label Temperley London was up and running and launched during London Fashion Week. Now she is the hip young designer who has one of the most desired brands in the world and a celebrity clientele that includes the who's who of television, music and film. This hot young designer has also been featured in American Vogue as a representative of the ideal 20-something, whose clothing is now sold in more than 200 retail outlets, including Harvey Nichols, Neiman Marcus, and Saks Fifth Avenue in over 30 countries. Since her label's introduction, she has turned it into a brand that carries ready-to-wear clothing that includes well-tailored and casual outfits, while also carrying her trademark dresses that have won the hearts of many celebrities. Considering she hasn't been in the industry for that long, it only took her four years to turn her label into an internationally recognized player. Her spring-summer 2005 collection followed the season's floral trend, but with certain garish additions which suggested she was trying to make a statement. I wanted very few beautiful, empowered, confident girls and um, just girls that sort of make, take your breath away basically. Nothing hard, nothing edgy, just kind of beautiful clothes that are wearable. Colourful prints were tinged with elaborate metal beading and accompanied by crochets in bright pink, lilac and yellow on black. Heavy black overlays on wishy-washy silk dresses and fussily sequined lace were also featured. Her signature gowns, aimed at red carpet events, were lavish creations decorated with gold and silver beads. Inspired by matadors, dancing horses, flamenco and Frida Kahlo, the legendary Mexican painter, Tempoli's Hispanic homage sent out dress after dress of the finest wool and colors of black, grape, plum and red for her autumn-winter 2005 collection. Paying major attention to detail, her clothing was practical and beautiful, with intricately crocheted and embroidered details shooting her into the fashion superpower list. In 2008, after showing her collections in New York for a number of years, Tempoli returned to London with a throwback to the early 20th century, revealing a ladylike collection with models walking the runway in thimble-shaped hats, one-shouldered dresses and tops cinched in at the waist with studded belts. Tempoli used a majority of black and white with the odd purple, pink and electric blue mixed in, ending the show on a parade of frilly dresses with thin straps upholding the garment. Her incredible craftsmanship has appeared time and time again on the red carpet, most often with her Temperley London Black label, designed especially for red carpet occasions as well as bridal, making the wearer not just look beautiful, but feel beautiful. Actress Jennifer Garner looked ready for an awards ceremony with the Temperley gown she wore to her film premiere in London in 2007. Mixing blue and black, Garner looked sophisticated, glamorous and like a true screen siren. A pregnant Halle Berry in 2008 radiated beauty in Temperley London's ruffled layered Papillon mini dress at the Palm Springs Film Festival Awards. And musician Jewel at the 2009 People's Choice Awards definitely hit the right note in her colourful and floral flowing Temperley London dress. As a fairly new face in the fashion industry, it appears Alice Temperley has put a fresh new spin on the way women dress. Her attention to detail, use of fabrics and classic looks mixed with the edgy romantic have given the women of today that fresh new feminine form. Nicole Miller's basic yet elegant designs have introduced us to some of the most wearable and feminine creations around, also having graced the red carpet. This American fashion designer began by studying at the Rhode Island School of Design, where she gained her sense of freedom and creativity, and at the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture in Paris, which taught her the classic techniques of couture. By the early 1980s, she was producing her own designs and creating clothes, followed a few years later with the opening of her own boutique. And having a brilliant knowledge of fashion is there every step of the way during the design process. The late 1990s, she was showing collections and emphasizing clothes that a lot of women would actually wear, believing that women between the ages of 28 and 48 wore her clothes on a day-to-day -day basis, unlike some of the clothing from other designers that were a little more edgy. 
Miller's fashions for spring 1999 were, if anything, wearable. She featured dresses in viscose crepe, embroidered white poplin, grey chintz jersey and navy jersey, and purposely avoided using the colour black, so she filled the gap by using navy, grey and chino. I was just sort of sick of silly clothes and clothes that are contrived and clothes that are for the runway and clothes that have shock appeal. And I just wanted something that was like easier and calmer and easier to understand, easy to put together. I mean, everything worked with everything. You really could take something from the embroidered group and wear it with a gray tweed group and everything worked back and forth. By 2003, she had released clothes that were a beautiful mix of colors and textures with a decidedly Art Deco 20s theme. Fabrics were a blend of rayon jersey, wool gabardine, suede, lycra, silk, knit crepe, fur trims and taffeta. Textures were patterned wools with sequins, glazed crunch taffetas, shirred chiffon and beaded silks. Silhouettes were slim with tailored jackets over trim form-fitting miniskirts. A neutral palette of colour was used including black, brown, olive, fatigue, wine and loden. A flirty mix of hemlines cut on the bias and flat front pants with high-legged boots completed the tailored ensembles. For the designer's Spring 2004 show, she sent up the runway flirty feminine dresses mainly in whites, which were also the focus of the collection. The designs were simple and attractive and came in a mixture of fabrics from silk and chamuse to tulle and lace. Natural colors also dominated the collection, creating the perfect silhouettes for a woman with curves. By 2009, for her fall collection, she wanted to create something where people were unable to tell what she'd be up to, as she'd been feeling a little typecast. She began with architectural drawings, wanting to use shades of black and white. However, she began to add touches of blue, red and plum to a runway show that consisted of cocktail dresses, jackets, skirts and tops that appeared with sequins, tiers, pleats and zippers. Since the early days in her career, Miller has had a successful relationship with celebrities, from using them in catwalk shows to dressing them for the red carpet events. Alicia Keys has been spotted a number of times looking elegant and feminine in Miller's strapless designs, from the gorgeous purple chamuse dress to the metallic sweetheart neckline dress. Beth Otrosky walked the catwalk with her dog wearing Nicole Miller, while Jean Smart and Felicity Huffman have both appeared at award ceremonies looking as elegant as ever and like true leading ladies in Miller's stunning gowns. Today, Miller's lines, which now also include cosmetics and sportswear, are sold in a number of Nicole Miller boutiques and upmarket retail outlets like Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus. She combines elements of rebellion and sexiness with refined, graceful and beautiful looks to create the look of the modern, sophisticated and feminine woman of today. It's no wonder then she's also a designer to the stars. Gaining a reputation for creating feminine red carpet gowns that get the fashion critics' tongues wagging and the cameras flashing is American couturier Mark Bauer. Coming from Johannesburg in South Africa, Bauer was awarded the South African Vogue Young Designers Award before migrating to the United States of America. Once arriving, he met fashion icon Holston, who offered the young designer a job. Having always had a love for movies and Hollywood's leading ladies, Bauer, while at Holston, worked on his technique, refining his skills as a master draper, which would eventually become his trademark and present him to the world where he would gain international fame as one of the red carpet designers favored by the stars. His eye for detail and talent for creating attractive and graceful outfits has since landed him on the cover of many magazines and made him the choice for many high profile and watched women. By 2004, it had been several seasons since the South African-born designer had shown a collection in a formal runway setting, but when he finally did, the fashionistas agreed it was worth the wait. His show was full of evening clothes that would be perfect for award ceremonies such as the Oscars, and the highly elegant selection of cocktail and evening wear evoked a quasi-Spanish-style look, with lace as the key fabric. 
Bauer's palette ranged from black to red, white, gold, brown, emerald and pea green to silvery grey and ivory. Slinky gowns with overlapping straps and necklines, the show featured draped fronts, cutouts, slashes, wrapped asymmetrical layers across the fronts and backs of gowns, and even a scarf-like one-shoulder halter. A couple of years earlier, Bauer made history when he introduced a collection that was entirely free of animal products, along with his famous quote, fur belongs on an animal, not on a hanger. In 2005, at his fall show in New York City, he complimented his gowns with sumptuous furs that appeared deceptively real, but were in fact fake. Tiger-striped shawls, coyote jackets and chinchilla boleros also added an extra touch of glamour and further evoked the look and feel of the jazz age. His glamorous collection used primarily satin or elaborately beaded fabrics, reminiscent of Hollywood's golden age, and his signature gowns in caramels, creams, and mockers were sure to be seen at many red carpet events. Attending his show and sporting a Bauer creation was cabaret star and good friend of the designer, Liza Minnelli, who caused a paparazzi feeding frenzy at his show. For his 2009 spring collection, Bauer bypassed the fuss and bother of tents for his fashion show in favor of the internet where his show would premiere. Models pranced down the runway as photographers furiously snapped away, but unlike most fashion shows, the room was devoid of an audience. The collection featured red carpet-worthy gowns in bright colors with flowing trains and sunny one-piece swimsuits inspired by the 1970s. The star of the show was model Lydia Hurst, who won the Supermodel of the Year Award at the Michael Awards in New York City. Bauer's gowns have long been a favorite of celebrities and have graced the bodies of many women at award shows, concerts and film premieres. He has a dream list of clientele that includes Jennifer Hudson, who wore his figure-hugging gown at the New York premiere of Dreamgirls, and high school musical star Vanessa Hudgens, who glittered in a gold sequin dress matched with gold sandals. And you know you're a designer who's made the big time when Hollywood beauties such as Angelina Jolie, who wore a plunging white satin gown to the Oscars, and Marsha Cross, who attended the Golden Globes in a pale orange flowing gown, come to you for gowns. He has gained respect with his draping looks in luxurious fabrics and continues to present glamour and quality to the red carpet. Mark Bauer has definitely reintroduced the elegant feminine look and turned it into a must-have for any woman.